Silent Hill The Short Message is a first person psychological horror game that follows Anita and her friends as she explores an abandoned apartment building in the fictional city of Kettenstad. The game is available on PlayStation 5. She never said anything nice. Atmosphere. The game's atmosphere is primarily of isolation and loneliness brought about by social media in the modern world, and the game talks about a lot of real-world events like COVID and pushes it into a very derelict building filled with haunting graffiti and cold drab colours. Though to combat this, the atmosphere often takes a turn into the beautiful with the strange, disconnected FMV cutscenes and Maya's Did inspiring artworks. CB. Cherry Blossom. That's Maya's signature. She's... amazing. The city's a blank canvas, begging for us to paint it with our hopes and dreams. The game also brings up the same looping mechanic that made PT popular and as a level of hopelessness, as in many of these situations, both the player and Anita have no idea what to do to escape. The atmosphere doesn't change much or try anything particularly interesting, but its eerie loneliness pervades the whole game. That's one Harry Mason. Scares. The game's scares only include a few startling scripted events and some short chase sequences in a corridor where you have to outmaneuver the cherry blossom monster that pursues you. These sort of create a bit of an obvious rift in the gameplay with the moments where you know you're in danger being drastically different from the moments where you aren't. The chase sequences weren't stressful or frightening despite how interesting and well designed the monster was, and sadly by the late game this was more tedious than frightening with the mazes being more trial and error, and some areas being abnormally dark on the default brightness settings. That's still one Harry Mason. Where did it even go? What the fuck was that thing? Sound design. The game's soundtrack is pretty great with several deep emotive tracks and things that harken back to earlier Silent Hill games thanks to its composer, Akira Yamioka. Though this time nothing really stood out during the game, but the overall quality was still very high. The sound effects were very typical but worked with the environments, blending things in. There's some decent voice acting from Anita, but characters like her mother were not so lucky with the same thing. There's some directional audio to help players find items in the final section of the game, and besides this it didn't really need to go any further. Overall the sound design is solid. That's two Harry Masons. Gore. There's not really any gore, with even the dark subject matter of some sections of the story portrayed in a way that replaced reality with metaphor, dummies for real people and so forth. It paints an image in your mind and backs it up with something to represent it without showing you what happened. Which is neat, but sometimes felt a little lacking. That's three Harry Masons. Trapped. I've always been trapped. Story. The story follows three girls as their friendship and social situations collide into a surreal nightmare. The game deals with a lot of anxieties from social media and the facade that people present outwardly, and deals with those miscommunications in a way that will either speak to people or won't. There are themes of suicide and isolation, insignificance and self-loathing, but the way they're presented again will either reach its audience or fall on deaf ears, since its presentation is often confusing or contrived. 
There's a lot going on, from folklore tales that are leading people to think that someone is a witch, to confusing FMV scenes where it's hard to tell who is talking to who, and various characters are brought up to never be explained the importance of. Diary entries cover an overwhelming number of almost unrelated things that only muddy the narrative further, but at the same time, every big revelation is explained thoroughly through text to her friend Amelie just in case you missed it, which was a little tiring. The more straightforward, relatable parts of the story are pretty disturbing, with the neatest parts being able to carry the psychological elements of the game on its own. Whilst the game does eventually reveal all after it's been through several PT-style loops, the journey that led you there felt more arduous than it needed to be. Making the final score 3 out of 5 Harry Masons. The short message was neither groundbreaking nor very original, but it didn't need to be. There was nothing wrong with the game, but it still felt very alien, presenting something with a familiar name that seemed nothing like its namesake, with it resembling P.T. more than any of the other titles that founded the franchise. And being aimed more towards a younger audience left me personally alienated. There are a lot of expectations that will certainly come from a new batch of Silent Hill games, and the short message was possibly a great introduction to those new to the franchise, but as a long-time fan, it felt almost unrelated. Don't worry about what people think. Again, I'd like to remind you the whole thing is down to my opinion in horror games. And if you don't share this opinion, then that's cool. I get it. I'd like to point out that whilst I escaped the complex, I did not let social media destroy me and advise you don't either. There will be more horror reviews in the pipeline, and thanks for watching. Now let's go check out Bumps in the middle of the night. Peace.